Monster Rise is over. Well, for me at least. Before we get into assumptions, this isn't me bashing on Monster Hunter Rise. All the games have their positives and negatives. This will also be from a perspective from someone who first played Monster Hunter World and went backwards from there. I have also played Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, 4 Ultimate, and now I'm diving into 3 Ultimate, which I'm really enjoying. So I have played the previous Monster Hunter games to understand the mechanics of how things used to work in the other titles. Monster Hunter is something that I have been extremely passionate about, and Monster Hunter Rise has been something I have been really wanting to talk about, especially after the changes from Monster Hunter World. For those that don't know, Monster Hunter Rise is one of the most recent games in the Monster Hunter series, uh, taking a lot of mechanics from the world and older games like Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. This game brought a lot to the table with trying new things like a wire bug and in different ways to grind up charms and decorations. I'll also be talking about how the end game is in Rise, comparing it to the other Monster Hunter installments. This is not me hating on the game, it's mostly just talking about where I fell off with Monster Hunter Rise and why it didn't really stick with me, as well as the previous games did. Before we get further into the video, I do live stream on Twitch. I'm currently having my first experience playing Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and I'm enjoying every bit of it, especially since I'm not playing, uh the PC version. But either way, would love to see you all there. In terms of story, this game was pretty short. The village quests were incredibly easy and it only ended at the portion where you meet Magnamello. You don't even fight Ibushi until you get into the multiplayer portion of the game. In the previous games, there were also village quests and then hub quests which you do in multiplayer. There was a lot more depth in terms of story and the characters that you travel with. It took me around 3 hours to beat the village quest in Monster Hunter Rise. The story for the village quest was mostly centered around Magna Malo, and your objective is to discover and fight this mysterious beast. There are no elders in the main storyline. No, the biggest threat was Magna Malo, who is not even considered an elder, but is instead a fanged wyvern. While well, writing this script, I actually don't remember much of the story. I enjoyed it, it was just I didn't encounter many challenges as I got through it. It was easy to get through most of the quests. I'm not sure if it's because of my experience in world knowing what to expect into a new game in low rank, or if it was just easier in general. Urgent quests were done a bit differently from the previous Monster Hunter games. In past Monster Hunter titles, you were given a required quest per rank. In order to get to the next rank, you need to complete these quests to unlock the urgent quest, which gives you access to the next rank. This is how you progress the game and eventually reach the end game. It was done differently in Rise, however. Instead of doing specific quests to unlock your urgent quests, you can now select them from a pool of quests from your choosing in that rank to then unlock the next urgent quest. The characters of the story were great as well, especially since it starts off with an ara ara right off the bat in Japanese. I really enjoyed the development of the twins as well as Fugen. When you finished through the story, you were given a longsword as a gift for helping to save everyone. It wasn't the best longsword, but it was cool to be rewarded in some way to finish the story. Then we were teased with the fact that the twins were being used until we got more of the story later on in hub quests. I definitely felt a lot more of a connection with these characters than I did with World, but not as much as the previous games like in 3U and 4U. The characters were overall colorful and fun until you get to see their personality flourish for most of the game. Whereas in World, all the characters didn't get as much screen time aside from a few like the handler, the commander, and the field team leader. Something that was new and introduced in Monster Hunter Rise is Rampage Mode. It's a new balloon tower defense mode in Monster Hunter where you set up multiple turrets to keep the monsters from breaking through the defense fences into the village. I feel like this game mode is fun, but they could do so much more to it. There is only one location that this map is placed in, and while the layout swaps occasionally, the scenery stays the same. Other than the different monsters in the end of the rampage, there wasn't much of a difference between them. They all had the same function and the same path. There weren't many different ways to make it more challenging other than a few invading monsters being Magda Mello, who barely appeared at all. It would be nice to see the monsters make more of an appearance. The Ibushi fight was also different with its colossal size, and made the rampage really fun with is shooting rocks everywhere in its path. The different apex monsters and rampages can be pretty challenging and fun to fight against, but there is no reward other than money and tickets that you get from them. The different monsters don't have any armor or weapons that you can get from them. These monsters relate to the Deviants in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. They are stronger versions of the original monsters, with added moves to them as well. Something else I don't really think is a good design for the Rampages is the moment that the Apexes appear, they break through all defenses until the last barrier is available. So no matter what you do, they'll always break through. You might as well just have one barrier the entire game. Something I would love to see from the Rampages is a little more difficulty gap for the Apex monsters, more invasive monsters that could ruin your hunt, more maps from the ones that we have gotten from the game, 
it would add more variety to the hunts with multiple different maps that we have in the game, either than the ones we already have, or even entirely new ones. If there were a few critical changes to the rampages, I would absolutely do them more and hunt the apexes themselves outside of the rampages. The wirebug is a new weapon and essential mechanic introduced to the game. The way the wirebug works in the game is that you use this to maneuver around in different locations and rise. It allows you to move faster, recover from getting hit, as well as new move sets to the weapons you use. This isn't the first time Muscle Hunter has done something different with the movement of your hunter in the games. We got underwater combat in Muscle Hunter Tri, the hunter arts in Muscle Hunter Generations, then the clutch claw in Muscle Hunter World Iceborne. Underwater combat made sense with controls and situations for the monsters you fought in Try, or in this case when I played 3 Ultimate. Except for my fear of the unknown of the water! Then Monster Hunter Generations added the hunter arts that brought so much replayability and diversity to the game. There were so many ways to hunt with one weapon with many different hunter arts. It made each hunt a new experience with their flashy and flexible styles. Clutch Call expanded each weapon and how they performed from base game. The extension made it so then you're able to bring in more damage to the monster when fighting it. Although it did feel out of the way at times, it was an overall pretty fun experience. With now in Muscle to Rise with a wire bug, it was pretty fun honestly. It was a mechanic that definitely made movement and hunt seem faster paced and more chaotic, but I thought it was great. With the wire bug being a living companion, it is actively altered in the hunts as well. If you get Ice Blight in the game, the bug gets affected alongside the hunter, to where it takes a lot longer to recharge. It definitely felt more of an extension of the hunter than how the Clutch Claw did in Muscle Hunter World Iceborne. You can also adjust the movements of the wire bug attacks for each weapon through the switch skill system. It acted like the Hunter R system from Muscle Hunter Generations Ultimate, yet instead of having to build up a gauge, you'd expend a bug to attack. The wire bug, whenever you get hit by a monster, you can use it as a quick recovery to spring back into action if you have one available. You just need to be careful because if you get up too quickly, you might get punished by the monster's counterattack or combos. When it comes to Monster Hunter Endgame, the main focus is to make better sets and continue to improve them to fight the endgame monsters, which normally ends up being the tempered or hyper versions of the previous foes. Decoration and talismans are key in this part of the game, as they allow complete customization of skills for your armor sets. The farm for Endgame did change a bit in Monster Hunter World, but at the end of the day, a grind was necessary to obtain decorations for your set to fight against the harder monsters of the game. The problem with Monster Hunter Rise, on the other hand, is the lack of harder monsters to fight. Not only that, but also a lack of farming for decorations for talismans as well. They did implement a farming system in a way in Monster Hunter Rise. But in order to get the charms, you would need to turn in monster materials, then go out for a certain amount of hunts to see what you would get through the randomized table of skills, which most of the time weren't the best. When getting materials in Rise, it was a lot easier to obtain and get what you need, even for the gems from each monster was easily obtainable, so you don't need to grind much. You also didn't need to use many materials to unlock the armor, layered, or any other materials in the game. In most of the world in the previous games, especially Try and 3 Ultimate, it was a lot more difficult to get the items you needed. Hell, it took me 14 hours to get the gem for Bracket Deals in 3U. It definitely took a lot more materials per item to get what you need. The percentage of drops were way lower than compared to Rise. A lot of items you need for armor and materials to upgrade weapons are obtainable in a few hunts. Although from time to time it did take a little bit to get the orb from a few monsters since RNG wasn't in my favor. Most of the end game was charm farming, but there was also grinding up to get to 99 as well. There was many achievements that you could get. There are many ways to get your own endgame from all the games. You could grind up every piece of armor in the game, play every weapon. Again, it's not really fair to compare the endgame for Rise because of it not having G rank, or now known as Master rank. Once we get the Master rank portion of the game, then we could definitely talk more about the endgame and what they have to offer. Let's talk about Sunbreak. After the initial release of Monster Hunter Rise, we did get quite a bit of content. We got an update that officially gave an ending for the base game of Monster Hunter Rise. All Mother got introduced into the game, becoming the new big boss to fight in the end. Valstrak stormed into the game, getting everyone hyped, including myself giving us a little bit of a challenge for a short while. I'm genuinely excited for this expansion for Monster Hunter Rise. It's going to be exciting to see what they're going to do for the game. What we have seen so far is the new Elder Dragon Malzeno and the new castle-like location, similar to the Castle Shrade, which is where we fight Vitalis. And we also got the Crab back, Shogun Senator. 
Even though I'm not a big fan of the monster, I'm genuinely excited to see it back. It's a monster that definitely moves a lot differently from the rest, and it'll be fun to mess around with, especially with the combat system. I'll always be excited from whatever they bring to the table, but I hope they don't reveal much like what they did with Monster in a World or Monster in a Rise. I feel like there was very little surprise getting into the game. I definitely love to get into the game knowing as little as possible, but if we get trailers for every monster that's going to be in it, then I'm fine with it. Now, my one dream is to get Gormagala or Asylos in HD. If we ever get those, that would be amazing. I've been really happy with Monster Hunter Rise. I've taken over 200 hours with the game and got over rank 200 as well. And it's definitely a game that I'll keep getting back into. While this game doesn't really grab my interest to keep playing it for the long run compared to previous titles, I still had a blast with it, created a lot of memories, and it did a lot of things that I really loved that the previous titles didn't cover. Even if my interest had died with the game over time with a lack of content, I felt like it had. I had fun with Wild Rise. I'll definitely be getting this title for PC to play through it again. The high quality graphics and the smooth frame rate is going to make me really happy to get into this again. Um, then we also have an expansion coming around soon. Thank you all so much for watching. If you all enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. We also have a um, we also have a Patreon. I post updates on what we do there for all the content I make here on YouTube. Also, for those that don't know, I also make content on other platforms as well, posting TikTok more and streaming every week. If you are all interested and would like to hunt with me and join in the chaos, I would love to see you all there. Love your faces and see you all in the next video. Goodbye.